the button are we live i think we're live yeah it says setting up your meeting for the live zoom i'll just um... okay i think we're on it says live on facebook okay we're live and this is i can't remember which no, i've lost track i think <laughs> 84 but we'll get there and this is the abundance show and i am here with the beautiful um i think visionary coach juliet tang my friend that i've just met this year we're both doing something called the 11th hour and she lives in beautiful new york and i'm here as you know on uh what's normally paradise on the gold coast of australia Today it's pouring with rain, but we need oh. the rain so it is just so beautiful. And what we, um, yeah, so I, how do I change my, I'm just trying to rename me. I am, the Freedom Gang is, is in my um, business, online business. And I keep forgetting to change my name. So there we go. We've got Julian. And what we're going to do first, we're going to do something really crazy just to get the energy up because we're talking today about money, the flow of money, and how important it is as we, what I call, um, love ourselves into limitless abundance. So we can live a life of freedom. And today, this was the Heart Whisper card that came out when um, I asked, what's the message that I need to share with all the heart whisperers for everybody in the world? And I just think for me, it's Friday. I know for Juliet, it's still Thursday, but here we are, Friday and freedom. And freedom, mm. the, the freedom that comes when we fully love ourselves and we let go of fear allows that money to flow. So what we're just going to do first, something I do every morning and when I particularly normally on the beach and we do a little dance. It's I love money and money loves me. <laughs> I love money and money loves me. I love money and money loves me. So if you do that little dance three times, it raises your vibes. Beautiful. So um, it is. It's lots of, it is lots of fun and it is beautiful. So we've got today, I've got Juliet here. She supports visionary coaches to create and sell their signature work, leveling up to six figures and beyond, I think at the moment, and amplifying their impact. Now, one of the things that we both are very conscious of is the more money we make, the more impact we can have. So, Juliet, welcome to the show. I'm absolutely delighted to have you here today. Thank you. Delighted to be here, Susie. Oh, it's, we're going to have so much fun because we've both been, I was listening yesterday to Juliet or your, earlier this week, and she was talking about how she used to struggle. She had a huge following on Facebook which all of you know I have a huge following on Facebook, but that following doesn't always, um, it, we can be really inspiring, but I developed a new word last week, it's called cashspiration. It doesn't always mm. work, the cash, the money, the impact that we want to make a difference. And I believe what Juliet's doing with her work is really helping people particularly visionary coaches, um, consultants. You work with artists and things, Juliet, as well? Um, it really depends. Usually the people who find me are coaches and consultants mm. who are doing more type of transformation work. Mm. So we're all about transformation. So Juliet, would you like to just tell people a little bit about you and... Um, how you've made that transition for, to allow the money to flow and what you maybe had to do um, within because we yeah. all know we have to do to make that transformation we have to come from within as well yes 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 absolutely i love the question so what didn't i do first of all 
Um, I'm I'm gonna say that um, when it comes to when it comes to conscious entrepreneurs making money, it it really is it occurs on all of these levels. It occurs on the level of the soul, on the level of strategy, and on the level of self, which are actually the three pillars of my work. When it comes to the self work, it was actually eventually to understand that I couldn't. I couldn't be stuck in another process, and I know this is something that our mentors talk about a lot. And our mentors are, you know, approaching their eight figures. They're really awesome visionary leaders in this world. So for me, because of my background, I have background in energy healing, hypnosis, transformation, um, transformational coaching, spiritual teaching to like C-level executives. I used to be always stuck in one process or another or another or another until I realized. That my energy was completely turned inward. That I made no effort to outreach, to actually be of service to people, and to actually connect with people and build that type of trust and offer them value. So when I realized all of those things, I realized that that disconnect made money not want to come in, because ultimately we are, you know, we are our services, and when we are no, when we're not connecting with the world, with our audience. With our community,、um, there is no exchange and there is no flow of that energy. Eventually, money is that inflow and outflow. So, without the flow, I was kind of stuck in my own world and stuck in my own transformation. And there were people who needed my help. They had, you know, and I had a huge following in my mailing list on my、um, Instagram, on Facebook. People really couldn't connect with me. They didn't really know who I was. I wasn't consistently showing up. I wasn't sharing. Parts about me that、um, that could connect with them, and I wasn't really sharing my value, and I wasn't really asking for business. So all of these are super common mistakes that all of us make. And、um, the moment that I did that, and I started outreaching, and I started really projecting the energy outward, which the internal work of that was giving myself permission to be seen and to be heard, because so many of of us feel very vulnerable showing up online. And a lot of us feel vulnerable in sharing parts of us that we deem to be shameful, and sometimes we feel like we should not be, you know, we should not be like showing up every single day, talking about ourselves, giving our stories, offering,、uh, you know, tips because we're not good enough. All of those are the internal work that、um, that eventually ended up happening, so that I could project the energy outward, show up without kind of like getting caught in the idea that. Well, I'm not good enough. I don't have enough to say. My work is not valuable. People are going to judge me, which is a huge one, you know, because there are a lot of trolls on social media that are kind of like just jumping down people's throats. And this is what how, what kind of stops a lot of entrepreneurs from showing up. So eventually, it was just about giving myself the permission to show up and project my energy outward rather than keeping everything in, and、um, make an effort to really kind of deliver.、Um, The expertise to people in a way that they understand, and I know I probably said a ton in here, but these are just a few things that、um, that really made a huge change in my business and in my income. I think that's、um, I think that's fantastic, and I'm just sharing this.、Um, I'm just、uh, getting this onto my timeline. Awesome.、Uh, that is fantastic, and I think. As you say, one of the things that I want to pick up on first is because I'm noticing this with people that I'm sort of doing reading, stroke coaching for,、um, is that one more course,、um, that one more course. I wrote a blog、yeah. post on this.、Um, you know, <laughs> just because you're going to do it, you know, doing another course is. I mean, how many? How many、uh, qualifications do you have,、um, Juliet? Yeah, I I probably like above ten right now. I can't even keep track, you know. And at one point,、uh, they were like on my website, but these days it's more like I I I do believe you know professional training and awareness and all of these things are important. But at the end of the day, we can't let them stop us from showing up at the moment. So a lot of the times. You know, personal development becomes an excuse for us to hide in that space, so that we're not coming out and deliver our medicine and saying what needs to be said. So, of course, all of us as consciousness, you know, we are 
a physical, you know, we're physical manifestations of consciousness. We're always evolving. And as we're evolving, there are things that we're going to feel like we're ready for and things that we're going to feel like we're not ready for. So the secret sauce, honestly, is just to keep showing up even when we're not feeling ready, because that, that excuse about I need to be ready or I need to buy one more course on, I don't know, a confidence in order for me to show up is exactly what is stopping the cash from flowing in. And that is from firsthand experience. I was in that space for years. I understand, I understand that. I understand that one as well. And I, what I heard the other day was, um, oh, our sister had, who wants to, you know, have her own business. Um, and she had about four qualifications. And she said, oh, I just got to get one more certification. So when I asked her how old she was, I said, you've got life. You've got all that life experiences. You know, and all of the the qualifications you have, you take parts from each of it. Um, yeah. And I was explaining to her, I've done a lot of work with um, Brandon Bay's The Journey, and I use a lot of that work in my uh, meditations, in my coaching, and things. But yes, I can. I've probably count that many pieces of paper I have mm -hmm. over the years. And all of them add to who we are. Yeah. Um, but somebody said to me the other day was what really um, can stop the money flow is we don't love ourselves enough. Mm, yeah. Now, uh, Juliet, do you have a daily practice that you do? Um, yeah, I do. I have... Um... I have, I have a ton of practices that I do on a daily basis in order to support me in my focus and performance. So I know I shared a few with you. Hot yoga once a day. I alternate between hot yoga and kickboxing. <laughs> I meditate three times a day. I make sure that I, you know, physically and mentally, I take care of myself. But I'm going to say that what, what's really important that I've noticed in the practice of self-love, I know that's our topic, is that... Um, Part of self-love is actually giving ourselves permission to just broadcast who we are the way that we are right now, instead of waiting for us to be perfect and waiting for ourselves to kind of like, you know, have like all of the, uh, all of the ducks lined up in a row. So um, I'm also going to say that I feel self-love is a very courageous act, right? It's not just, and I know that on, on the surface, it, a lot of times it is, you know, um, you know, doing things that are taking care of our physical bodies, um, booking that spot, you know, booking that spot appointment, things like that. But um, when it comes to the more fierce part about self-love that actually calls in the clients and the money, that type of self-love takes courage. So a lot of the times it's the self-love and dedicating ourselves to see through our own bullshit see through our own <laughs> bullshit stories, not hiding. And I know you can really relate to this one, not hiding behind the screen of positivity. And I need to be kind and loving to anyone. And I'm not allowed to feel angry. So that is another part. Self-love is also about boundaries. You know, how much we're honoring our boundaries and we're not allowing our boundaries to be kind of like uh, violated by ourselves, by other people. When it's time to say yes, when it's time to say no, being committed to our vision so much so that we're willing to do whatever it takes. That is self-love, not hiding in the story um, of like, oh, you know, I'm just going to make myself feel good. And hopefully that thing is going to come to me later, but no ca catching to me, catching myself in my own stories and catching myself in, you know, whatever unconscious self sabotaging patterns and saying to myself, Juliet, I'm holding you accountable so that you're showing up for yourself and you're actually backing yourself. To me, that is, you know, to me these days, this is my form of self-love. I may have a ton of practices that go with it, but ultimately it's a decision and it's kind of like an energetic embodiment that I'm not tolerating my own excuses and I'm going to allow myself to be committed to what it is that I set out to be, do, and create and just go ahead and do that no matter what. So Harry, these are like the few layers. Yeah. Well, I, I, think, I think life is layers. But I think 
yeah. um, coming to the truth of who we are is like it's like peeling off the onion skin. Yeah. Um, and it's baby steps. You yes. don't have to jump out there all at once. You know, you can start slowly. And I thought it was interesting you brought up courage because I I responded to something you wrote the other day and I said, courage allows us to step away from what keeps us, what was it, what keeps us broke and oh, somewhere I wrote it down. Courage allows us to... Uh, uh, to step away from what keeps us broke and stuck. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, what I, what I find is, I, what I find is quite a lot of the people, and this, I've got this showing in testimonials, is I'm able to help people get unblocked. Mm -hmm. They get blocked and they, they don't know why. And often it goes back to what stops people from, Stepping into that courage. Oh, and I have to show you. I have on today the courage T-shirt. Oh, is, that's cute. Yeah, it is. It's the courage painting. Um, yeah, so it's, um, and what stops them is they don't have any daily rituals. Uh. That's what I'm finding is I say to somebody, um, so what do you do first in the morning? Um, do you keep a gratitude journal? Because the more grateful we are, the more we're going to have love for ourselves. And as I say, um, you know, ab abundance sits on the wings of gratitude. And I'm always reminded that, you know, Oprah said her life changed when she started keeping a gratitude journal. And she still mm. does it every night, I believe, before she goes to bed wow but, yeah i can see her doing that yeah yeah and but she says that was a big part of changing and um so it's it's having the courage to say yes i'm going yeah. to change my life i'm going to share my story with the world i'm going to make an impact in the world well, for some people i found they they have to go back to some of those really really basic things which are probably mm. too easy for you and me, which is to stand in front of a mirror and say, I love you, Susie. I really love you. <laughs> I, get, I get people to look in their eyes. Yeah. Get the mirror. Um, normally have a, I haven't got a mirror here today. And I remember that, you know, some, somebody said, oh, I can't do that. And I said, well, that's why we're going to start with the really, really simple things because if we start there, we start to build a daily habit. Mm -hmm. What you're talking about is you have now because you fully embrace yourself and your magic. Um, and, yes, we all have magic inside. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I believe we all have magic. Yeah. And a lot of us don't let that magic come out to play. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know that too well. I mean, I feel like that's, that's part of the hero's journey, right? And, um, and in terms of that practice, I remember it was about like two years ago when I really came out of the closet and decided that, you know, what my vision is too important for me to hide. And that kind of became a catalyst for me to like, like all of that started happening internally. And I remember literally every single day looking into the mirror and just saying these things, because the thing is, we have grown up to be self-critics. We are our worst critics. We never think we are enough for anything right um so when I did that work two years ago I realized that I was still not comfortable with saying things saying great things about myself I would easily jump into like oh Juliet you know like everybody else on Facebook is doing that 100k launches what have you done <laughs> you know like why, why are you not there yet and it's it's so easy to get to kind of like slip into that mode these days, you know, for, for a lot of the people online, because uh, people tend to air the best on social media and keep the worst to themselves, right? So, so at the time, I remember starting with that and eventually it evolved into courage, into, you know what, I, if I can stand in my own power and if I can just be centered enough 
in my being, in my magic, in my essence, in my sovereignty, then this is what I want to project out to the world in a world where all of us have, you know, kind of been imprinted by the collective programming of I'm not good enough. I don't have enough. Um, I, I don't offer enough value to the world. All of the negative self-talk eventually I feel largely has been given to us by, you know, by like the, the environment that we live in. So um, that evolved into courage and courage is something that money loves <laughs> because both are masculine energies. You know, money really admires courage. Money loves it when we show up. Money shows up and when we show up and money shows up when we, when we kind of like expand into this fuller version of who we are, which is held by love, you know, because it's impossible for us to give ourselves permissions to embody a fuller version of who we are without that self-love piece. And I know like in a world that we live in, um, you know, there are people who live in self-hatred and create a lot of money. It is possible because they kind of just work with strategies and mindset. But I feel for the people who are kind of like the pioneers of consciousness, the game changers, right? The, the next level conscious leaders and entrepreneurs, for us to actually create that abundance flow, um, we, need, we need that inner alchemy to love ourselves enough to step into a fuller version of who we are and then deliver the medicine from that place. Yes, absolutely. And that's it. It's grounded in that, in that practice of, um, of self-love. And it's so many, um, I mean, that was, for me, that was my story. I, um, I couldn't believe it when I got, I got that down, I got a download in that dialysis chair was, why me? And uh, you'll be healed when you fully love yourself and you will share the message of love with the world. And that was such a shock to me because probably like a lot of other people, um, we've got quite a lot of people watching here. If people can, um, I can only see the comments on my, um, I can only see who's watching at the moment on my phone. I'm, my computer's not being cooperative. Um, but I'd love for people to put in there, how do you feel about you? Do you understand that when you do fully love yourself, the abundance you want whether it's money, health, you know, today we are talking money. But for some of you, um, I know it's, it's health. Um, some of you, it might be a love relationship. You want an abundance of love. But it all goes back to that feeling in here, you are good enough. And um, yet yeah, feeling that you are good enough and that you are... Well, we just we did an I am enough challenge recently, and I had that written on my um, on my mirror because I was showing other people go into the bathroom and say I am enough. Oh, I am more than enough. Mm -hmm. Week, some of you might have seen I've written a post that says, um, you know, I am the best because I was mm -hmm. asked by a colleague um, of and a friend of mine, did I actually believe I was the best? I was the best artist. I was the best oracle card reader. I was the best coach. And I had some doubts. So I've got, I'm about to put on my mirror now in bright pink lipstick, I am the best. <laughs> so that I remind myself of that. But also of saying, when you say you're the best, because we get past being, we know when we know we're enough, what's that next stage that mm. we need to step on to? And, mm -hmm. you know, and Juliet's talking about, you know, this thing of for all of us in business. I mean, yesterday it was um, our mentor and coach, Kate Chiffy Gray, um, has challenged us about how, how are you showing up? But it's about yeah. the energy. It's about the energy. Is our people getting your energy? That's why people come to work with us. They like um, they like the energy, and 
we all attract different people because we put out, we have different stories, we put out different energy. Mm -hmm. I asked um, on a 2080, uh, on a 100% scale of 20, 80, 10, 90, 30, 70, where, how did you show up? So um, I was, uh, I said, and I asked this, and he said, yeah, I think 70, 30. Sometimes I think I'm 80, 20. But the idea is, is to have your energy in that magnetic state of, you know, mm. because so often we keep talking because we're a bit embarrassed or we're not, we don't feel confident enough or something like that out there. So I find that that's very interesting because it really takes courage. Mm, How, yeah. So when you made that shift from um, being, you know, you knew you were popular, you had 5,000 friends and you probably had whatever else. <laughs> but you knew that it wasn't, it wasn't empowering your business. It wasn't probably yeah. empowering you. Yeah, yeah. That first step that you took that was courageous, that made the shift. I killed my business. I, I killed that version of my business because not only it was not speaking to me anymore, it wasn't in alignment with where I want to go. And I felt that I was attracting the wrong people. And obviously it's not the people, it was, there was something in me that was magnetizing them into my world. Um, the first step was I killed that version of the business. I pivoted. And um, the next part was I actually connected with my inner masculine energy of clarity, you know, and I know I did a Facebook um, you know, live on clarity, because if we're not clear, you know, this is for entrepreneurs, but this is also for people who are just working at their careers. If we're not, when it comes to business, if we're not clear who we are, what we do, what audience we serve, what our expertise is, and, um, you know, how to communicate with our audience, there is no business. When it comes to a career, um, so many people have been programmed to just kind of like, after college, right, you get a degree after college, you go to, you know, you get a job and you just stay there forever. And a lot of times people get stuck in that career because they honestly have no clarity as to where they're, where they want to go next, what their higher life vision is. So they end up being stuck in a, in a career for like 30, 40, 50 years, and then they feel empty on the inside. So clarity is a masculine energy. And um, when it comes to creating anything, money included, you know, clarity is super important. So killed that version of business, got clarity. Then I went back to school and acquired more skill sets because then it became service. I felt like that was the transition of, um, and I joke around in my Facebook group, this is the transition going from a princess to a queen. Because as a princess, I was so passionate. Oh God, I have this higher passion and purpose. I want to help people. I just want to be fully self-expressed. Yeah. And then no money was coming in. And then I realized, well, you know what? It's, it, it is about me. It is about my vision, but there is something that is so much larger. It is about the community. It is about the people that I'm helping. It is about impacting the world and helping people make, like, make better choices, live fuller lives. And in me, for me, business coaching is really helping them create you know, the wealth so that they can stand in their leadership and create that impact that they want. So I took the attention off of me and put the attention on them so that it created a very service and result oriented business in which I get to show up and be fully self-expressed in a way that also helps people transform their lives rather than me kind of being in my own princess land and kind of like being stuck there and like, well, you know, it's just about my journey, my expression, me posting photos on Facebook. No, now it became, you know, the queen rules a queendom. She cares about, she cares about helping people in her queendom prosper. I love that. That is brilliant. The queen rules her queendom. Yeah. Right. And she can't get there alone because the benevolent queen is all about that archetype, which is coming from the heart. She's even though she's sitting on the throne, she is here for the people. She's not just sitting in, in her castle waiting for things to be brought to her, you know, waiting for things to show up. 
I mean, she is here for the people. And I feel for so many entrepreneurs, they are especially the very heart centered ones where they care so much about the journey and the process and the purpose and the alignment that they're forgetting the outer piece of creating money. In, in a business, which is to reach out to people, which is to actually be of divine service so that we connect with our audience and we, we're offering them value. And when coming from that place, when we share our stories, it serves as an inspiration to paint possibilities for them so that they get to see, well, you know what? This is where you were before. This is where you are now. You've closed the gap. You've done it. And this is giving me faith that I can do this too. And I feel like eventually we, we get to this place. We get to realize that it is about me, but it's not always about me. It is about everybody else. It's a, that I, I think that's it. You know, it's about, it's the we, um, not always the I. I yeah, it's the we. <laughs> the, the queen rules her kingdom. And we've got some men on here as well. Um, and, the king, and the king rules his rules kingdom. You know, there is a lot of men out there who are printers. And <laughs> they're, not, yeah. they're not playing in their full game. And oh um, yeah. Yeah, I've um I now have men buying my cars. Um and I I suppose, you know, my main market has been women, but I've actually got men buying the cards and I've just been interviewed by a male numerologist. Who wants to? Yes, he what he thinks these change lives, and they do. But he has interviewed me on my um, what I my accelerated program that I have for the year, and is putting that um up on um his page. So I've taken him through the process. So I'm excited because so many of us do focus on women but there's a lot of men out there who yes. want to open their hearts to love and who really want to make an impact in this world oh yes 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 some of I've had some amazing amazing male clients too you know so it's um um it, it's coming to a place I feel like collectively we're coming to the place where we are finally realizing that this is the time of unity right so that we're we're we're, we're balancing the feminine and the masculine. We're also balancing the inner and the outer. Mm, I think so. And I think that oh, I think that's really important that um, this coming this coming together of, of the male and the female um, energy. And um, Juliet and I see it in um, the people we're working with because there's a male and a female who stand side by side on stages now. And um, yes. having just Juliet, unfortunately, wasn't with us last week. But we have just um, experienced the most amazing six days. Des and I were there. And um, it's just that they're talking so much about the importance of um, the impact we make. But we can't make that impact if we're not making money, we, you know, with, with money, we can um, be so much more yeah. philanthropic. We can make contributions. We can build schools. We can help people have clean water and things like that. But if we're in victim mode and we're broke and we're always saying we can't afford it, we can't do that. Mm, yeah. The work, Juliet, that you're doing and um, I just think the work that we're all, all of us conscious entrepreneurs who've um, been able to break away from that, what is it, um, the spiritual world. I, I got involved in a conversation today where somebody said, Joe Dispenza shouldn't charge for the work he does. Oh, God, another um, one, and another one. <laughs> and and um, I've had people say, um, well, I should keep doing all my readings for free. Um, well, you know, <laughs> I can't go to the supermarket. I keep saying to people, you can't, can't go down to Coles or Woolies here and uh, fill up your shopping basket and say, oh, I'll pay you an inspiration or something. It doesn't work. So there's this whole shift away from, um 
the that spiritual world of oh, I can't really charge for money. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's outdated. That is really, really outdated. I, I know I've been really verbal about this on my social media because um, honestly, you know, the, the people that I coach, a lot of times they are unconsciously playing out that scarcity pattern. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you know, my work is transformation. Therefore, I should just give away my work. You know, there's a difference between running a business and running a charity. And I don't see that. <laughs> there are a lot of people who do not, who cannot tell the difference. Mm. Like I'm here to help people. Of course you are, but you're also here to create, you know, a thriving business for yourself to create a beautiful lifestyle and to have a fun experience, you know, in this game of life, you know, ultimately that's, that, that actually comes back to self-love because I went through that journey many years ago where I was. um, So first I felt very icky with charging money. And second, I let what people were saying about money, like, oh, Julia, you should do this for free or you should be offering me discounts. I let their stories um, dictate where I was operating from. So I've personally gone through this journey myself and I've personally left pretty much all of those communities that glorify poverty and scarcity and to a certain extent entitlement, right? And victim consciousness, which is the way that I see it. So coming back to self-love, honestly, self-love is about as much about giving as receiving. There is, it's not, it, you know, wealth is a cycle. First of all, wealth is an embodiment. It's a state of being, and that's a cycle. So if we are just all about giving and not all, allowing ourselves to receive, there is no wealth because that is breaking the cycle. And same thing with only wanting to get, but not give. That is not, yeah, that is not in balance either. So hopefully I feel, you know, especially with the people that I know, hopefully that we are here to anchor a new physical reality, which is the one where we're bridging all of these things. We're bridging spirit, we're bridging money, we're bridging business, we're uh, bridging conscious leadership and vision and all of these things, because, you know, it's time. It's time for us to get out of that outdated spiritual, you know, programming, which is rooted in deep religious trauma that is all about poverty and scarcity and victim consciousness and being stuck in the process. You know, um, for the people who want to make money and want to create that type of impact, you've got to be out there. You've got to ask for what you want and you've got to back yourself on what you want. Stop Uh, shrinking. That's now back. It's so important. Um, We heard that so much last week. Are you actually? Yeah. Now, that goes back to where we started today is because You can only back yourself when you believe in yourself and when you love yourself. So it's, as Julia's been saying, it is, it's a cycle. But the first cycle that some people have to get on is that to feel really good about yourself. Wake up in the morning. I mean, what are the first, I often say to people, what are the first words that you say when you wake up? Are they thank you? Are they, I Mm. love you, Susie. Today is going to be a beautiful day. Or are they, oh, another day. Oh, I've got to go out. Oh, it's raining. I mean, (laughs) so many different things. I'm always reminded of um, Wayne Dyer, who I had the honour of actually meeting and talking with, as Mm. how he, you know, when he got up in the morning, he put, as he put his feet on the floor, he said, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I remember. I remember watching that in one of the videos from him years ago. It just it always, I don't know, it always touches my heart because um, I just think, you know, gratitude is so much part of our own self-love. It's part of us being abundant as well. Mm. Here's something that I, I just received this about gratitude. The interesting thing about gratitude is that it, it is, you know, it's not a feeling, it's a state of being. Mm. And um, when it comes to creating money, we cannot create from a state of being of scarcity. We can only create from a wealth state of being. So gratitude is actually the vibration of wealth because gratitude is saying that we've already filled our own cups so much so that we're thanking the universe our cups are so full. So operating from this state of being, we then can, you know, make the choices and take the actions 
that are magnetizing whatever opportunities and people into our lives for us to carry out our mission and co-create the things that we want. And this is how money comes to us because money comes as an exchange of the value that we offer, right? The goods and services that we offer. So gratitude is really, um, I see it as these, this internal operating system that we operate from. That, that is saying, you know what, instead of coming from the place that my cup is half full, my cup is overflowing right now. And I have more than enough, which is one of my favorite things to say is I have more than enough. And that's, yeah, yeah I am more than enough. I have more than enough because these are the things that, um, that program our, our minds, that program our energy, our consciousness. Hence, we take a different set of actions. Absolutely. And I was, the other day, Elizabeth, one of the, um, people in, in yeah. thing, you and I, Elizabeth, I'm an open vault for wealth. You know, I'm allowing it, allowing it in. We have to allow it in. And for so many, particularly women and uh, even men, I'm not Men, yeah. I mean, you know, I had a mother who give, 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 mm. and it was selfish to put yourself first. But yeah. what I've learned is when we feed our soul first, we fill our heart, we fill ourselves first. And that's why it's important for what we do first thing in the morning, that we fill our own cup first, so then we can go out and spread the love, the joy, the inspiration that empowers other people to bring in their world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. I just love that. Um, that I love that uh, gratitude is the vibration of wealth. I think you've got yeah. another, um, a new quote, Juliet. I will put it in. <laughs> when, awesome. I, uh, when I put this up um, on my on my, um, on my my website and on YouTube, I'll, I'll do that one. We've, it's very interesting. I've just brought this show back to my Facebook page from my profile. Um, and although for some reason I haven't been able to see all the comments, there's a whole lot of people that I have not seen for a long while. I just want to say, um, hi, Jenny. Hi, Barry. Uh, Sandan's been on as well. Um, hi, Caressa. Hi, Ron. Hi, Patricia. Peggy. Robert. Uh, Angelique. My friend Robert Stern. Karen. My goodness, we've had... A lot of a lot of people watching here on my page. Amazing, amazing. So it was a decision I made before I spoke to Juliet yesterday that I was going to switch the show back to my page and just put it as a watch party on my profile. So um, thank you, everybody, so much for being here on what is Freedom Friday for me. It's still <laughs> thankful Thursday next door. Oh, over the um, other side of the ocean. Um, have you got anything you would like to say or a tip you'd like to give somebody as we finish today, Juliet? Mm. <laughs> oh boy, um, <laughs> you just you just gotta do it. Just just do it. Just do it. That's the Nike slogan. Just just do it. It's um you know whatever it is that that next, there's always a next action. That next action is always going to be an uncomfortable one in order for us to receive the money that we want or the impact that we want. So just do it. That, that's so important because without taking the next step, there's going to be no next step, no next step. The universe doesn't just give like an entire action plan of a hundred steps. Be like, oh, you know, pick and choose what feels comfortable. What's going to get us to have more money, to have more impact, to have more freedom are the uncomfortable steps that we've been avoiding to take. So just take them. So everybody, there's a challenge for you. What's the step? What's your next step that's going to move you closer to more wealth, more freedom, to being fully empowered? And on that note, I'm going to thank Juliet so much for being here. Um, thank you. Been, I have, this has been empowering and so much fun. I want to thank everybody who's watching and anybody who's watching the replay, um, please put in replay. If you have any questions, 
Um, I will come back and respond um, to all of those. And we will be back next Friday with a special Valentine's Day. Um, mm. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, it will be great. Thank you again, Juliet, for being here. Thank, Thank you, Susie. Here. Love you all. And everybody, remember, love yourself into abundance to live your life of freedom. Namaste.